for this video, I'm going to be presenting something a little different. A review of an episode of the Powerpuff Girls, called Equal Fights, which deals with the subject of sexism and feminism. Sure, there are plenty of cartoon episodes that uses this sort of plot, and they usually involve a female character experiencing prejudice because of their gender, and by the end of the episode, they prove the sexist wrong. Equal Fights, however, takes a different approach to the topic, as it instead explores how certain individuals who claim they fight for equal rights really just use social justice as an excuse to hide the fact that they really just want to spread their own prejudices. This is a complex issue that not a lot of kids shows tackle, but does the Powerpuff Girls succeed in doing so? Let's find out. So Equal Fight starts off with the Powerpuff Girls going about their day, which includes doing a chore that the professor asked them to do, going to school, and getting a phone call from the mayor where he asks them to stop a bank robbery. Now at first, all of these details don't seem too important, but as you will see later in the episode, each of these moments are crucial setups that are vital to the plot. We then cut to the bank robbery in question, where the narrator assumes that the thief is a man, only for it to turn out that it's actually a woman committing the crime. This is a neat little detail that shows off the societal prejudice against men, which is something that's not frequently portrayed in media. Anyway, the robber is a villainess who calls herself Femme Patel, and this scene wastes no time in establishing her as a misandress, insulting and belittling men for the sole fact that they're men. That's right, you sad excuse of a man. You've been rendered completely helpless by a woman. Men can't do anything right! She also demands to be only given Susan B. Anthony coins, the only form of American currency that has the face of a woman on it, and they come up again in an important scene later in the episode. Before we move on with the plot, I'd like to address this one criticism towards the character design of Femme Patel that I've heard a couple of times, that being her suit is unsubtle, with the female sex symbols and all. Although, I'll have to disagree with that, as it does make sense, given Femme Patel's obsession with gender. Anyway, moving on. Then Patel tries to make her escape, only to be apprehended by the girls. But then she tries to manipulate them into thinking that they're disrespected as female heroes. Although the girls initially tried to argue otherwise, they couldn't come up with good enough counterpoints. Granted, this doesn't make Femme Patel correct about how they're treated. They're just young and don't know enough. You girls protect your city just as well as Batman and Superman protect theirs. But do you have your own movie? Ironic, considering that they not only eventually got that movie, but in a later episode, they were approached by a director, who wanted to make a film about them. While Femme Patel acts as if she's talking about feminism in this scene, there are a couple lines that contradict that. Such as one where she straight up admits that she believes that women are superior to men. Can't you girls see? The man can't admit we're better than him, so he keeps us down! She even makes the argument that if she goes to jail, there'll be no female villains left. She's literally saying that criminals should be let free to cause more damage for the sake of quote-unquote gender equality. While it's clear that Femme Patel is a misandrous and not a feminist, when you listen to what she's actually saying, because of her manipulation skills and the girls being young and impressionable, they end up believing that she's right and let her go free. The next day, the girls go through the same events at the beginning of the episode, except with a drastic new attitude, as they now have a hatred for all boys and men. It starts at the playground at their school, when a boy throws a ball at a girl. Although it was established earlier that this was a part of a game that the two of them enjoy playing together, the girls with their new mindset now wrongfully see this as an attack, motivated by sexism, and so they threaten him. When they get back home, the professor asks them to clean their room, while he does the rest of the housework, but they misinterpret this as an order to do cleaning, solely because they're girls, and get mad at him. They then get a call from the mayor, who asks them to stop Femme Fatale, but they instead berate him for getting women to do his dirty work, gaslighting him into thinking that he's a misogynist. Oh, she's right! I'm a horrible little man! How will I ever make it up to the women of Townsville? Ooh, I know! I'll plant more flowers in the park! Ladies love flowers! Okay, this joke is just so hilarious to me. Anyway, the girls' misandry catches the attention of Miss Keen and Miss Bellum. Concerned about their behavior, the two women arrange a meeting with the girls to discuss about it. When the girls try to justify their actions, they come to the realization that there was no sexism involved in the situations throughout the episode. 
in the city, why is he always asking us to save it for him? Oh, you're absolutely right, girls. He should be using his own superpowers to save the city. And when they tried to justify letting Femme Patel go, using the women should stick together mentality that she instilled into them, they weren't about the women who were hurt by her actions. Was Femme Fatale looking out for me when she stole from my bank? Was she looking out for me when she broke my arm? Plus showing that she doesn't practice what she preaches, and is only looking out for herself. Miss Keene and Miss Bellin then encouraged the girls to continue fighting the injustices in Townsville. Not because of their gender, but because they're the only ones with the powers to do so. This is such an excellent and well-written scene of the girls being set on the right path by the two most prominent female figures in their lives, teaching them that not literally every man is out to oppress them because they're girls, while demonstrating the difference between true feminism and misandry clearly, without hitting the audience over the head with the message. Which brings us to the climax, where the girls finally put a stop to Femme Patel's crime spree. And as they confront her, they ask her what Susan B. Anthony was actually known for. And as it turns out, Femme Patel doesn't even know, and only cared about the fact that she was a woman, due to her obsession with gender. This truly exposes Femme Patel as a phony pseudo-feminist, as she doesn't care enough to learn about Susan B. Anthony's accomplishments, and only wanted her coin solely because they're the only ones that have a woman on it. Which is just well gain her to her gender. This exact moment in particular is far more relevant nowadays, as there are plenty of so-called progressives like Femme Mattel, who praise people for their identity rather than their achievements, which is more regressive if anything. The Powerpuff Girls then explain to Femme Mattel about the history of Susan B. Anthony, as she voted back when it was illegal for a woman to do so. However, she was originally going to be given a lighter punishment because she was a woman. Now this could have been seen as a benefit to being a woman in society. However, Susan B. Anthony instead wanted to be given the same punishment that a man would receive, as she wanted to be treated equal to men, rather than being given special treatment because of her gender. It seems that Susan B. Anthony had a far better understanding of true equality than most modern day activists, that it means having both the good and the bad that comes with it, and that any group getting a special advantage over the other would go against that. This is why her example is what we should strive for as a society. Granted, this scene had turned off some on people. Even the writer of the episode, Ron Faust, expressed regret over it, due to it supposedly coming across as a preachy lecture. I can understand where these people are coming from, considering how badly a bunch of recent cartoons had botched the execution of a progressive message. Although many of these shows in question were written by pseudo-activists, who get positive morals mixed up with their toxic mentality, that makes them come across as hypocritical. However, I believe Warren Faust had the right idea when executing this episode's message, delivering a ton of nuance and layers to the topic in question. Also, this isn't the only 2000s cartoon episode that has tackled a serious social issue, along with delivering a progressive message. There's Sons of Fathers from Static Shock, Trog from Teen Titans, and She's Got Game from the original Proud Family. I believe cartoons can teach kids progressive messages, but of course they have to be well written and executed. Another important factor that makes this scene work is that it isn't lecturing the audience, but rather Femme Patel, the character who is being sexist, which is the proper way to get the message across. The Proud family rather than prouder failed to understand this, as in the episode about colorism, the character who was colorless doesn't get confronted on screen, but instead all the characters hate on Zoe, just because she was asked out by him. Alright, now back to the Powerpuff Girls episode. And so, the girls defeat Femme Patel, and have her sent to jail, and the narrator closes off the episode with a a little sexism joke. Hey, did you ever notice there are no chick narrators? Ow! Hey, who threw that? And that was Equal Fights. And as I mentioned before, this episode feels far more relevant nowadays. Femme Patel is clearly a fake feminist, who uses feminism as an excuse for her criminal acts and her misandry. Feminism is about gender equality. Therefore, generalizing men in a negative light and being hateful of them goes completely against it. Unfortunately, from the 2010s to now, man-hating misandrists just like Femme Patel have become the loudest voices and had had the biggest influence in the feminist movement, and the hypocritical and backwards ideas on gender equality have been presented as correct in mainstream media. So now characters like Femme Patel are portrayed as the good guys, instead of being rightfully criticized. 
This has unfortunately resulted in the reputation of feminism becoming completely tarnished. Which is why the message of equal fights is more important than ever. Understanding that misandry is not feminism, and that presenting it as such will only cause us to go backwards in progression. And that was my video on the Powerpuff Girls episode, Equal Fights. If you enjoyed it, then be sure to give it a like, share, and comment. Also, subscribe to my channel and hit the bell for notifications. And if you're interested in supporting my channel, then head over to my Patreon. Well, I got nothing else to say, so see ya.